Welcome to Eye Opener. This Sunday we have a very exciting program, very exciting uh, topic for us to discuss. As you have been following probably with on our shows, we will be talking about the calendar that uh, IIT Kharagpur has produced, uh, talking about the Aryan invasion or Aryan settlements as a myth produced by the colonial uh, historians or, to or so to speak colonial um, the, you know, uh, forces that are trying to divide India and rule. That is the primary agenda that we see in the entire calendar. And uh, today we have uh, a very distinguished professor. Uh, in fact, he is a, he's a retired uh, head of the department from Madras, has been the president of the 24th session of Tamil Nadu History Congress and have authored nine books so far, Professor Karunanandan Garu. Welcome, sir, on to the show. It is a pleasure to be with you and it is a uh, very good occasion for me to share my views yes, with sir. a very learned uh, audience. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, sir, for accepting our invitation. And it's a it's a pleasure and honor, and it's a real honor on us a lot to, to invite you and to have you on the uh, on our um, show. Uh, the former president of AUT, ACTA, and the member of Syndicate, Madras University. Lots of uh, uh, titles on you. Lots of uh, experience that you carry in the academic uh, uh, areas or the academic field that you have served this country so far. Uh, and, and one question to begin with as, a, as an ice cracker probably, in all of your year, these years of experience, uh, sir, uh, do, you, do you approve of or do you agree with the approach that the IIT Karakpur has uh, come, you know, come forward with a calendar talking about issues that, uh, that are very controversial for some people, but they but are very emotional and dear to the hearts of some other people and more, more importantly for historians like you, uh, it might be distorting or misrepresenting the facts. Normally, history is um, always used to by the powers that hold the reins of the government. They try to control history or yes, tamper sir. with the history to serve their own interest mm. that we understand. India's first history, history of India, was produced by East India Company mm. in the year 1817. Mm. Until then, there is no Indian history and there was no Indian historiography. Mm. So, William Jones started the Asiatic Studies, which uh, paved a way for the Indological researches. Mm. At the time, they were served in the government. East India Company is not a regular uh, an administrative agency. Mm. It secured the territories here and it was permitted to run the administration. Mm. Mm. So as a Western country, England felt the need for creating history for the colonies that it created later. Mm. So that mm. its administrators will, will be benefited by that knowledge. Mm. So they entrusted the work to Haleybury College. Hmm. So, Haleybury College produced the first history of India, history of British India in 1817. So, we are at 2000, uh, 204 years have passed hmm. since the first history was published. Until then, we had only some uh, evidences for certain events, some uh, biographies, autobiography, the process these so many other things are there. There was no concrete history of a nation. Mm. The first history was history of British India in three volumes. Mm. The first volume, ancient period, which they called Hindu India. Okay. The second uh, second division, which covered the Islamic period, they called Muslim India, Muhammadan mm. India. Then the third chapter, they called it very surprisingly, British India. Mm. The first two were named after religions. Religions. The, the last one, that is modern period, they called it British India. Mm. British does not indicate a religion, but Correct. Correct. a nation and a culture. Mm. And who, how did they create the Indian history then? Mm. They were supplied information only by those who were serving them. Mm. So, all the upper caste people were in the government. 
the mm. company's government they produced the evidence for making a history mm. and mostly they relied on sanskrit literature mm. because they did not go through any other linguistic sources mm. they relied only on sanskrit literature we served the purpose of a ruling clique or a, a influential clique in the society so based on that they created hindu india mm. unfortunately mm. that hindu india at that time no literature sanskrit or any other literature makes a reference to hindu there is no hindu in any of the sanskrit literature mm. hinduism is not a religion mm. but anyway mm. who then created that history only the upper caste people who served the government mm. they supplied mm. the materials and they developed it further so when max muller he was interested with compiling the sanskrit literature who he was given money for it by the east india company mm. how that a german man could know sanskrit that language was forbidden for other people in india mm. this question was raised by ems nambud report mm. the marxist leader who was uh, twice the chief minister of kerala mm. so who whose interest it was supplied to him he learned sanskrit with brahmins mm. only with the brahmin help he learned sanskrit and translated it into other language Mm, mm. so the theory that indo aryan group of languages which was evolved during this period entirely suited the interest of the british rulers and the brahmin supporters mm, so mm. it was a joint protection mm, the theory mm. was a joint protection of the influential segment in india the colonial masters they befriended each other mm, and they claimed mm. that they were closer to it so they were the cousins they agreed that sanskrit belonged to the indo german family at that time it was it, i mean it was convenient for the brahmanical interest mm, mm. they could claim that they were cousins of the europeans mm, mm. why tilak was a, he is called a patriot or nationalist by the present day patriots balaganga tilak mm, why mm. should they write a book when he was in prison on the arctic home of vedas mm, mm, mm. was he stupid was he senseless or was he carried away by the propaganda of the british he at that time these influential segments in india were collaborating with the british authorities mm. so they uh, evolved the theory that the aryan languages emanated only from scandinavian region mm. they were all the members of the same linguistic family mm. and they produced umpteen number of literature to support this view mm. at the time it was convenient but mm. when the indus valley civilization was produced was excavated mm. in the year 1921 22 prior to that there was no reference to non aryan cultures in india mm. you would have seen uh, i mean you could have under, i mean Uh, known all the uh, indian history textbooks mm. in all which there is the indian culture civilization were the products of aryans mm. so in claiming aryan authorship for the indian civilization they have no objection mm. even today the ugc produced a syllabus for the universities mm. for the undergraduate courses in history which claims Uh, one whole unit is devoted to aryan civilization mm. so arya when they use arya for their self projection it is a patriotic expression mm. when the same arya was disputed or when it is stated there are non aryans too when that argument comes it becomes treason mm. because all these arguments were coming from one particular mm. propaganda mm. that is they say that the aryan invasion is a myth mm. but what they do, uh, want us to believe is that when the historical conclusions are termed as myths mm. but they want the, all the mythologies in sanskrit to be accepted as historical facts mm. 
Correct. And they say that this Aryan, non-Aryan arguments were part of the British, uh, British, uh, British, um, what you call conspiracy mm. to divide and rule. Mm. What we find in history of civilization in the world mm. is that no civilization can emerge in isolation. Mm. The development from the animal stage to civilized society comes through face, I mean, responding to the challenges, mm. coming into contact with others and their preparedness to evolve new methods to overcome the existing challenges. Mm. No civilization uh, can be produced by Robinson Crusoe mm. who was isolated in an island. Mm. Civilization comes only when you live with others. Mm. So that's others an excellent eating. that's an excellent way of putting it. All I mean, no civilization can emerge in isolation. That yes. if we take that as the ground reality, if we take that as an agreed um, you know statement, everybody probably might agree with that. If that is the case, um, why why? Reputed institutions like IIT Kharagpur, are uh, if they are bringing uh, a calendar that says that everybody is uh, belongs to the same family and we are learning from each other, it is all just one nation, uh, you know uh, Aryans and Dravidians and uh, th this is all a, a course or a created myth stuff like that. If they are trying to produce one identity, uh, will that be a problem to uh, academicians like you? Definitely, because mm. history is an art of searching the truth mm. that made our progress mm. from the uh, under civilized and uncivilized stage to a civilized one. Mm. So, the, in this, we are all partners in progress. Mm. Mm. And in, if anybody says that, he is the only person who created everything because the Karakur. Mm. Calendar mm. is a classic example of colorable excess of authority. Okay, okay. Because that is a technological university. Mm. We can understand we produce something about the technology that exists in the past. Mm. The technological institute is abused mm. to distort existing history. Mm. Because authority the is abused mm. to project one particular view. Because that's also the interest of exploitative interest of some other group. Mm. Here, the Karakpur calendar is not the first instance of abuse of authority. Okay. It was preceded by the institution of a, a, a committee for the construction of India's cultural history for mm. 12,000 years, mm. which never uh, produced any report. Mm. And then it was followed by the national education policy mm. in which they wanted uh, wanted the students and teachers to agree that India's culture and civilization emanated only from Sanskrit and Sanskrit based culture. Right. Sir, sir before I before I forget, I am sorry if I am if I am uh, asking questions in the middle, but this is a very important questions for a question for me and also for the audiences because there are some comments asking me about these questions when I you know posted about an interview about you, the national education policy that you just referred to uh, yes. a couple of minutes ago, how is it connected to the authoritarian uh, ideology or the authoritarian uh, ideology that you are talking about? Is it, uh, uh, I mean going back to the roots of our own, um, our own learning system, will that be a problem to academicians? Definitely, because you know that. Mm. Education was originally in the state list mm. and it was transferred to the concurrent list during the emergency. Mm. Okay. The, the fathers of the Indian constitution acknowledged the fact that in a federal system, mm. the education, health and such other things should be administered only by the state mm. because which is nearer to the people. Mm. And India being a multicultural, multilingual nation, mm. education ought to be exercised by the provincial governments or the state governments. Mm. And we had, so far we had three education policies. 
1968, the first education policy which was produced when Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was the helm of affairs. Mm. The second one during the time of Rajiv Gandhi. The third one in 2020, the Bharatiya Janata Party's regime. Mm. The first two, first one was in act, was published when education was in the state list. Okay. These were in the form of recommendations, suggestions. Mm. Recommendations, right. And the second one, the, uh, which was enacted after the education was transferred to the concurrent list in the days of Rajiv Gandhi. Mm. There too, the recommendation of the Rajiv Gandhi's education policy were not given as orders to the state governments. Mm. States were given the option to adopt it, modify it or reject it. Mm. So Tamil Nadu, as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, Tamil Nadu rejected three language formula. Mm. Retain two language formula because, because this was possible because of the constitutional position of education as a state interest. Mm. In the concurrent list too, what is exactly what is uh, exactly expected? Both governments should concur on a particular issue. Mm. Concurrence should precede the decision, conclusion. Mm. Mm. But here the union government takes a decision and asks the state government to adopt it. Mm. So this third, this third education policy, national education policy, brought out by the Bharatiya Janata Party government, is not in the form of recommendation, but mm. in the form of dictations, which wow. makes mm. the entire education system controlled by the bureaucrats at the del at delay. Right. There will be a commission for the entire higher education, entire school education. Mm. All the state laws will become defunct. Mm. Once this law is accepted, mm. so all the universities forego their right to evolve syllabus. Mm. Mm. Now the syllabus is, uh, syllabus comes from the UGC. Right. UGC is not meant for syllabus making. Mm. It has been assigned a different work, coordination, mm. and uh, suggest, I mean, uh, recommendation, and little financial assistance whenever it needed. Mm. And uh, UGC is never expected to evolve syllabus. Then why this uh, university should do it? Right. Yeah, there are boards of studies which can do it better. Right. So, so, so with, the, the, with the intellectual program that, mm. uh, or you know, intellectually uh, using the universities and the educational institutions trying to push their own uh, agenda, uh, do you see? Do you sense any particular ideal, any particular uh, uh, strategy in this? Do you sense that it is, uh, it is dangerous to the states, or it is, it is really not helpful? even to the students as well. Do you see like that I mean, or you, you see that it is just uh, another political way of administration? Education cannot be isolated from the social realities, mm. especially the social sciences. Mm. They cannot be segregated from social realities. Mm. Education is part of the social requirement. Mm. So India is a country of multiple sources, different languages, different cultures, different races. So that identities of the provinces mm. ought to be recognized in history. The contributions from every quarter must be acknowledged in the history syllabus. Mm. For example, I mean you are in Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Andhra had a glorious past. Mm. The, in the post maurian age, the first South Indian Empire was created by the Sadhavakanas. Mm. 2nd century BC to 3rd century AD, mm. nearly 500 years, that Satavahana Empire mm. that was in Deccan, mm. which adopted Prakriti to in their inscriptions and governmental orders. Right. It never adopted Samskriti. Correct. Only Prakriti. Prakriti. Yeah. And it patronized mostly Buddhist. Mm. And you know that most of the Buddhist structures in the Andhra Pradesh, Correct. they belong Nagarjuna, Gunda, all Correct. these things. It belonged to the Sadhavakana period. Mm. Even the Ajanda Yellora caves, they belong to that particular period. Mm. Then later on, it was added by the Rashtra Kodas and others. Mm. So, this history, this Sadhavakana empire was more larger in extent than the Gupta empire. Mm. Gupta empire flourished only for 150 years. Mm. The Sadhavakana empire flourished for 500 years. Sadhavakana had overseas contact. Mm. They received the traders, they sent traders. Mm. They had contact with the Roman Empire 
and the Chinese Empire. Mm. And this Sautavagana period is not given the, its due in your syllabus. Yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's so hilarious, that means that's true. Yeah. The contributors being sidelined mm. and the exploiters being projected. Okay. That is that cannot be the issue. Here, mm. by distorting unnecessarily, bureaucratizing here the education, especially history making, the government is trying to project something which was exploitative in its nature as real nation makers. Mm. The nation makers were different people. Mm. 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 Because you know that the Vedic literature mm did not see trading activity with a favorable uh, one because they they considered it um, voyaging across the seas is a sin correct yes the ponies in the rigveda they belong they were uh, traders they were mentioned as anaryas mm. non aryans yes so trade is a part of civilization development mm. it spreads culture mm. it improves culture mm. the people who scorned the trade and abused the traders mm. Now, claim that they were the creators of everything in India. So, so you clearly see it as the contributors versus the, versus the exploiters. Yes. So in this, in, in this particular context today, in, in today's scenario, the agenda that, uh, you know, whatever ideological forces behind these institutions and pushing this ideology into, into, the, into uh, the Indian fraternity or Indian subcontinent, do you also see the same diversity? Do you also see the same uh, uh, conflict like uh, contributors versus the exploiters? Definitely, because you know that in the Marxian theory, classes, mm. the class conflict is the basic thing. Mm. The one who exploit the workers, mm. they are being challenged by workers later stage. Mm. So the thesis, antithesis and synthesis comes out. Mm. The class system changes. Mm. The people who belong to one particular class and their inheritors may change to other class later on. Mm. The slaves have become masters in Europe. Mm. But in India, the social system is different. Mm. The conflict between the exploiter and the exploited is continuous mm. by making mm. the working class and their rights and duties and their uh, facilities, everything birth based. So, the real work, what you call the uh, progressive work or productive work, mm. the work is being suppressed or exploited mm. and they are, these workers are denied their due throughout the history. Mm. There is no class, uh, the Varna change in India. Right. Class changes were taking place in North India. So that is why, while projecting, while uh, go, uh, I mean evolving a history for India, we should bring out social realities so that mm. we can create a healthy society in future. Mm. We want to make the society more cohesive. Mm. You cannot build a society more cohesive if inequalities persist and they were justified and mm. they were sanctified. Mm. Here, that is what happening here. Okay. The inequalities, the system of inequality is being sanctified mm. as a divinely ordained one. Correct. For example, in the Karakpur uh, calendar, calendar, the the first four objectives they mentioned there, mm, mm. the first page itself, that is re recognition of the secret of Vedas, mm. one. Second, reinterpretation of Indus Valley civilization. Mm. The third one, rebutted, uh, rebutted to the Aryan invasion myth. Right. And fourth one, 12 evidences, there, there are no evidence at all. Mm. Myths are uh, projected as histories. So this is how. So mm. they are very clear that they want to say that everything in India owes to the Aryans. Mm. But, there, but there is a confusion here too. Mm. By Aryan, they don't mean all the Aryan working class. They don't accept Buddhist. They mm. don't accept Logayadas. Mm. They don't accept the people who are workers in the Aryan society. Mm. It is, uh, in fact, they try to mislead us that Aryans, they mean, by Aryans, they mean only Brahmins. Mm. There are several books produced by the same people who are members here, mm. stating that the Brahmins were the fathers of Tamil civilization. Mm. The Brahmins are the fathers of the Bengali civilization, mm. Marathi civilization. It's, it's, it is a cost. It's, it's really interesting to, uh, to hear, hear that from you. 
would you how would you respond to an argument like that that brahmins or brahminical society is originally fathered tamil society would you how would you take it <laughs> a civilization is the expression of material progress mm. and the intellectual progress or ethical progress yeah. is secondary mm. material progress is the basis of the civilizations building cities houses and all the facilities for the human activity all these are created in the civilizational activity okay who will indulge in this product activity the pottery is done by potters hmm the cloths are produced by the weavers hmm brick making is the work of the workers hmm where does the brahmin come here the brahmin as for the smriti she was not entitled to do manual work hmm the manual work is done by somebody else hmm how can he claim that who designed that manual work the the rigvedic aryans dwelt only in the tents mm. temporary tent, transitory tents mm. they were not living in the uh, permanent buildings mm. in the fort or in the cities the rigveda insult says that the fort belonged to their enemies anaryas mm. and they were uh, fighting with them in many battles their first interest is to destroy their structures right and how such a people who had a pre existing excellent civilization urban culture claim that they were the masters of shilpa shastra or vastu shastra mm. only those people built houses with the bricks mm. will know that particular nuances about building better houses right the thing is that they claim authorship for everything this is the most dubious one mm. and history cannot be built on the base of claims mm. it has to be supported by evidences proofs mm. and how civilization was right. produced by priesthood right. every civilization was produced by workers working class mm. that is why we say that they uh, go i mean they try to establish that everything is there in rigveda right you you very interestingly mentioned about the evidence is not just the claims which is a very uh, that's the actual point of discussion here in in uh, uh, in the calendar for the month of january february and march they focused on some evidences for example in january uh, for the month of january they talked about the horses that you can find in uh, egypt today which are Uh, sorry in tibet today which are uh, more closer to uh, the species or horse species 5000 years ago which simply means india already had for horses in uh, before the so called aryan invasion myth so uh, that is number 1 number 2 they they talked about the swastik uh, number 3 they talked about uh, 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 the shivalinga and uh, the life that you know that the cycle of life of the six uh um you know the um so so on and so forth so these evidences these excavations uh, uh evidences from the excavations how do you see that are they really ex- a- a- evidences or that is just a sheer mis- misrepresentation of the original Misrep- it is nothing but misrepresentation hmm. some of the indus valley seals had swastika symbol mm mm-hmm. the rigveda there is a swastik stamba Mm-hmm. that is how they mention it in rigveda what does it mean they say that this indus valley was not pre aryan it was not non aryan mm. their claim is that it was a part of the vedic civilization vedic civilization yeah but that were rigveda had no script at the time mm. indus valley people had a script the script mostly meant for mm. the trade purposes that script mm. and along with that we find the uh, the uh, some symbols mm. swastik was a symbol the mm. question is rigveda was compiled as a written text only in the post christian era sayana mm. by sayana right it received a script only very late right but indus valley people had a script mm who are the earliest one <laughs> right 
the people who produced the script are who people who were scriptless for a longer period mm. the first sanskrit inscription occurred only in second century ad oh second century ad ad gurnar mm. inscription mm. prior to that there is no sanskrit inscription mm. but the, when you come to tamil nadu the our excavation revealed that we had our own script as early as 6th century 7th century bc mm. which is the earliest one correct so if you apply your common sense you will understand that the indus valley people had an art of script writing mm. and they also had a pictographic representation mm. swastika meant the solar power mm. rotating on solar power mm. and rigveda never explained that mm. simply there is a mention swastik right that may mean anything Mm. and the swastik was a symbol of the jains mm. so it is uh, i mean it is used by several people but the earliest one occurred only in indus valley mm. now they say that swastik commenced from rigveda so that they want to put rigveda prior to uh, that is more uh, much older than the indus valley so you see you see this as putting the cart ahead of the horse Yes, and one more thing, they refer to Kailas. Ah, uh, yeah, Kailas Giri. Yes. Ah, uh, Kailas and the rivers emanating from the uh, the Kailas. Right. Is there a single reference to Kailas in the Rigveda? Hmm. They mention Himavat. Hmm. Himalaya. Hmm. That is the place of ice snow. Hmm. They never mention the Kailas. Hmm. There is no Shiva as a god in the Rigveda. Mm. The Shivis were a people known for them a small tribe living mm. there as Shivis. There is no Shiva as a god. The Rigvedic Aryans were not worshipping idols. Mm. Rigvedic Aryans scorned those people who worshipped idols. Mm. Rigvedic people's activities were centered on yagna. Right. Fire altars. Mm. They had no temple, they had no uh the I mean, what do you call the the statues or any other idols for mm. and they derided people who worshiped the what do you call the idols mm. they called their they described their enemies as worshiping idols mm. female goddesses mm. so their worship their uh, worship system was entirely different yeah so sir so, sir so you you mentioned about the excavations in tamil nadu area Yes. Are you referring to the the Kayadi or, or Kaladi uh, excavation? KDD. There ah. are several places. Not only KDD. Purunal KDD. Mm. Uh, there are nearly about twenty uh, places mm. where the pottery works were uh, discovered. Mm. Yeah, are And there any evidences? The are there evi- any evidences of Hindutva or Hinduism or the religion promoted by the so-called uh, uh, the the Indian knowledge system? that iit karakpur is is promoting any swastika any shivalinga anything that is uh, hijacked no, by hindutva the early tamil culture and the indus valley culture there is one common feature which is very astonishing that hmm. people could have some belief in something that is a different thing right but there was no organized religion hmm. there was no big temple hmm so religion was not the focal point in their cultures okay so in the tamil nadu excavation so mm. far we did not discover any such a thing mm. indus valley to the representation of found only in the, uh, the seals mm. there was no structure which can be climbed as a temple mm. so the, these priestly activities were totally absent in our culture mm. the priestly priesthood and priestly activities were the prominent feature of the aryan culture so this priesthood and only the priest could perform the yagnas was a methodology adopted in the aryan world not in the non aryan world mm, mm. in the south indian belief system mm. we have celebrations we have festivals mm. fairs mm. where there is no reference to any hereditary priest in any of the literature okay people assemble together celebrate their gods mm. they they have their feast then go uh, i mean disperse that is the only thing 
there is no hereditary priesthood in the south indian system mm. hereditary priesthood belongs entirely to the vedic order mm. now this by distorting history they want to establish that the hereditary priesthood evolved everything and mm. it must be retained it mm. must be justified it must be glorified mm. in the syllabus issued by the ugc mm. they give a caption mm. the glory of the indian literature right they include only the sanskrit vedas prithis puranas in that list mm. is sanskrit synonymous with uh, india so they refuse to believe that there were non aryan cultures in india there were non aryan contributors to indian civilization mm. where we differ with them mm. no civilization no, nobody can claim divinely ordained right for civilization activity mm. there was a, there was an age when the jews called themselves chosen race right and this uh, claim was very miserable and there the cho- those who were chosen race they could not be saved from uh, eviction from their own motherland mm. but here these people say that this varna sanadana was divinely ordained one the vedic system why they insist on vedas mm. the whole graded social order found a place justification only in the sanskrit literature especially smritis mm. and an availed reference in the later vedic literature mm. so this unjust social order has to be revived in india is that do, do, you, do you think that's the focus or the ultimate uh, ultimate focus that is, is that through these calendars yes that is it agenda they want to make us believe that mm. our uh, india their vedic civilization comes to be the perfect knowledge they mm. knew everything mm. it did, that, there, there was no need for them to learn from others right, the new <laughs> civilization their existent commons is perfect knowledge for the system that that's uh, that uh, sir that statement is really intriguing really interesting as you rightly said the vedic culture or the vedic vedic civilization knew everything or perfect knowledge indian yes. knowledge system as this calendar also promotes uh, parallel to them even uh, some member of parliaments even the prime ministers even some uh, chief justices of uh, high court and supreme court so on and so forth very influential people in india also have this opinion that there is a lot of scientific evidences in uh, you know such as uh, vimana shastra such as uh, vastu shastra such as uh, you know uh, uh, the the khagola shastra or astrology there are so many sciences in uh, in vedas and in, and these westerners looted our vedas they took these vedas away from us and they learned and we are behind because we could not learn with us this is the theory that we see in the social uh, reengineering agenda that the, you know that happens these days what is your opinion about it the greek said a civilization sir and uh, even the the greek scholars plato and other uh, aristotle aristotle is known as the father of the sciences he mm. classified sciences mm. even he did not make a claim for physics chemistry anything he simply codified everything and gave it to us knowledge widens in gradual stages through gradual experience and explorations and observations mm. knowledge does not come through divine will mm. it comes through human effort so here they say that vaimanika shastra mm. and rama had a pushpaka vimana yeah to go to ayodhya after the lanka war mm. then why he should build a rama setu mm. to reach the ravana's place mm. for a war <laughs> right you could have used the air force at the time mm. vaimanika shastra mm. could they produce any text of the vaimanika shastra mm. second thing charaka susruda mm. they knew little surgery we don't deny that mm. but they belong to a age which was very much later mm. charaka belong to the kanishka age Mm. second century ad mm. and the introduced kautilya 
as the father of economics they say mm. that the father of economics mm. definition of economics is entirely different mm. artha shastra is meant to suggest ways and means to strengthen the king's authority mm. it is not about to improve the wealth of the people even adam smith talked about wealth of the nations mm. the, the the one which justifies autocracy of a king mm. how can it be a textbook on economics that arthur shastra even according to them yeah, i feel that he said mau he that he belong to maurian age itself is a distortion mm. he belong to a much later day mm. even if i accept he was the minister of chandragupta maurya chandragupta maurya lived in the 4th century bc Mm. Would he include fourth century BC in the Vedic age? Mm. So the claims are absurd. Mm. They listed about ten shastras. Yes. In the final page, ten yes. shastras, in which Kautilya is there, Samskriti is there. Yes. Samskriti is there. So many other things: Shilpa Shastra, Nati Shastra, mm. everything is there. Mm. Bharadas, Nati Shastra belong to Gupta age. Mm. How can you call it? Uh, I mean, a Vedic achievement. Mm. So most of the literature pertaining to this were produced at much later time. This was this could be possible that they were able to learn from others and then put it in writing. Only when Sanskrit was, came to be written in script, mm, which is two so AD. This happened much Sec- later. Yeah, which is second century AD, as you yes. pointed out. Yes, after yeah. second century AD. Mm. So they cannot claim anything to it. and even the earliest monuments in india were buddhist monuments mm, mm. none of them belong to the vedic monument mm. if the vedic people were much uh, excellent builders vedic structure could have been available now mm. monuments could have been available now mm. the earliest monuments available in india belong to ashokan age mm. you cannot show a temple which belonged to pre ashokan age mm. so all these claims were bogus claims to mislead the innocent people mm. but it, now what they do now is that they want to make it official record mm. the authority cannot be abused to make falsehood as a real thing mm. so we if you are a genius we don't say that other people are perfect mm. the non aryans had their own defects mm. so no system had perfection in it mm. they learned their lessons and improved their conditions right so here the, uh, the uh, this uh, hindutva claim is that they commenced as a perfect order mm. the perfect order would continue if you accept the other sub facts of the perfect order one of which the first one is that the way of life the sanadana system mm. the graded social order everyone should do the work which is assigned to them by the scripture right so this this is what they try to project Mm. Sir, sir the, I wanted to bring your attention to the to the initial comments that you made. Okay. You know, right right at the beginning of the show itself, you said that uh, the first Indian history was written in 1870. Yes. And uh, then later, you know, in in collaboration with uh, Max Miller, learning Sanskrit from the local Aryan Brahmins, and yes. at who at that time. equated themselves as the cousins of these uh, indo german or the you know they equated themselves with uh, 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 people who came from outside with white skin color and they called themselves the cousins of those white skinned uh, uh, people uh, and at do- and during those days it served their purpose so they they were happy with that kind of uh, collaboration but now through these the, the calendars and through some other uh, hindutva uh, ideological education systems which is these days is called as indian knowledge system they are claiming that these westerners they came and distorted and dis, uh, disturbed or completely eradicated our education system and they have imposed their education system so at one place they praise max muller at one place they uh, one place they use uh, vivekananda uh, uh, to call the indian knowledge system as superior we want our indian knowledge system to be superior of course we are all indians we have no doubt about it but not at this not at the cost of you know telling lies is what you said in the in the beginning itself so i just wanted your attention uh, uh, and help me understand how does this this fit 
either you call uh, the western westerners as complete demolishers of our education system and borrow nothing from them or you learn from them and be part of the uh, global family no one thing it is a political trick mm. for any ruler mm. to demonize the preceding ruler okay modi will demonize nehru mm. so that he can project himself as the real hero mm. demonization had been taking place in history writing for many years they accused the colonial regime for the loss of our knowledge system mm. the british were the first people colonial the colonies were created in fact to be truly speaking india was not made a true colony mm. colony virtually means i mean uh, bringing people from their land and making this uh, this uh, making this land a land of the immigrants mm. america was a colony of the europe right australia was a colony of the england mm. where there was a population change mm. but in india it was not exactly a colony mm. it was uh, some sort of quasi colony where mm. the indian resources were exploited but many uh, europeans did not reach here to stay here forever mm. only a few hundreds of uh, europeans came here mm. they could been because we were divided at the time mm. they conquered only divided india mm. who uh, i mean undivided india uh, who divided india prior to that mm. our own people mm. they quarreled with each other any empire was disintegrated by the rebels and rebels are glorified by the local interest mm. and the rebels then are i mean they are experiencing the same fate mm. there were rebels who revolted their the rebels authority mm. so this uh, what you call balkanization of india was being this for 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 many years mm. because this balkanization benefited only one segment that was the priesthood mm. in every early days to engage in a war one king must perform yagnas mm. before war during war after the war mm. very expensive uh, rituals mm. and the entire revenue went to uh, went to appease this priesthood mm. and the, the balkanization benefits that the num- when the number of kingdoms increase number of priesthood increases increase yeah and the revenue also gets distributed mm. it distributed but the real people suffer mm. why they should fight they do not know Mm. because the rajabakti devotion to king insisted mm. that they should fight and sacrifice their life mm. and deshabakti also similarly insisted now that they should fight they mm. should quarrel they should lose their life not for their promotion mm. these masters are sacrificed for the sake of few classes mm. this has been happening and it is a claim that the europeans had usurped many of our knowledge systems Mm. there cannot be more absurdity than this here the europeans were the first people to introduce printing mm. print media in india they printed even the vedic literature mm. the east india companies revenues were spent only to print the sanskrit literature mm. lord mekali later complained that they spent lakhs of rupees in printing the vedas there was nobody to buy any even a single copy of the vedas hmm then why should the state squander its uh, the revenues on this printing of vedas hmm so what mekali did was that they are over the, until then what was education hmm rooting the vedic hymns was the education hmm the mantras yantras this was the education hmm so the padachala sanskrit padachalas were meant only for the priestly class and the uh, government's uh, revenue was spent only on that mm. after the mekalayan system mm. public schools were introduced for the first time mm. and they stopped paying lord the grants to the madrasas and the padachalas mm. instead mekali made it very clear that government revenue could be spent only on public education secular education mm. so modern science technology modern social sciences economics philosophy everything were introduced during the mekalayan system mm. does it mean that 
he destroyed the earlier education system was there any one for the people hmm. the people were not allowed to enter into education hmm. the people were not allowed to enter into the temples where the education was important hmm. so yeah, it is uh, because they lost their monopoly hmm. because they lost the ground to claim that they knew everything vedas had everything in it hmm. that is uh, i mean humbug hmm. they indulge in vedas does not have everything in it so that's vedas their, are hymns hmm. so that is their problem because they lost their mon- uh, you know uh, hegemony monopoly. or monopoly or control over this education systems they are claiming it to be the lost or distorted by the westerners and and what about you i mean give me a little bit of more information or your opinion probably this might be my last question uh, before i uh, i call this a day uh, people like bishop robert caldwell or g u pope in in tamil nadu their contributions towards the local uh, literature and education and etc etc you definitely mentioned about mekale but what about these people because we tend to hear from the books that our hindutva friends write that these are the people that aim at distorting our education system these are the people that cr- that made our education system crawl uh, i mean disappear completely by introducing i mean praising some of the uh, tamilian uh, literature they they favored one set of uh, you know group and completely eradicated aryan education system is what uh the books are claiming first thing uh one thing i want to make it very clear that was there any regular scheme of public education prior to the colonial period mm there was none okay some village assemblies had uh, imported mm. primary education to some people when when you talk about higher education only vedic learning was considered as higher education which was deprived to the small, the other groups masses mm. and then when the europeans were indulging in linguistic studies mm. their first attention was only to sanskrit mm. who assisted them who showed them way how to know more who pro- uh, provided them with the manuscripts mm. only this uh, the same uh, right. who whose uh, I mean, sectors are now called as hindutva people right so these people were there hs wilson was a supporter of the sanskrit studies mm. james prince was supporter of the sanskrit studies sanskrit mm. schools so there were europeans who were supporting their claims too mm. because the foreigners were usually reluctant to disturb the local conditions hmm our lo- ex- then the local condition was that the deprivation of the uh, small masses the hmm. panjama sudras from office and from education hmm this was a system there and now the hindutva people call whoever disputed or whoever came with information that challenged the monopoly stand of sanskrit and brahmins Hmm. they are called christian conspirators or the western conspirators hmm. so the conspiracy theory is floated by the brahmins now in the two forces conspiracy theory it is a conspiracy if it is a conspiracy that benefited the sudras and panjamas 85% of the population hmm. if there was no if that conspiracy was not enacted by mekala and others the masses would have been i am mean, uh, in the bottom of the social order you would not have the opportunity to go for regular education hmm. i would not aspire for government jobs and hmm. for high positions hmm. so this conspiracy of mekale hmm. is appreciable people who belong to the oppressed group they hmm. welcome this conspiracy hmm. then they say that the caldwell and others hmm. were uh, were um, treated as cons- uh, the uh, what do you call traitors or right. conspirators right. because they disputed the argument that every language emanated from sanskrit in india mm. sanskrit is the mother of all languages mm. as i told you the very description of sanskrit is uh, very doubtful mm. because sanskrit samskriti means a refined reformed one mm. an improved one mm. 
does it does it not indicate that there was an unimproved version earlier mm. so what was the language prior to it sanskrit was never a popular language in india mm. not even today so Yeah, not even not today. Not even today. Not mm. even the past. Mm. We are the earliest empire, Nandan Empire. Mm. Then the succeeding empire, Mauryan Empire. Then the Southern Empire, Sadavahana Empire. Tamil kingdoms. Mm. We all know that they never used the Sanskrit. Mm. So Sanskrit was only a later language developed from an ancient language, which they themselves call Prakriti. Mm. Prakriti means natural. Mm. the one which was already existing mm. the prakriti was the sanskrit was developed from prakriti mm. so this prakriti language pali arthamagadi so many languages were there these were spoken by the people and the rulers at that time mm. so buddha did not use sanskrit because it was not popular language mm. mahavira did not use sanskrit because it was not popular language mm. because buddha always condemned elitism in social activities mm. the elitism is exploitative according to buddha mm. so you should converse with people only with their knowledge which is legible to them mm. so uh, sanskrit was never a popular language mm. and even during the gupta age sanskrit was made official language and the inscriptions were made in the sanskrit but how many people were able to read them mm. how many people were instructed by it because mm. you know very well that people were ignorant of sanskrit mm. they want people to be ignorant of sanskrit that they would not see what is uh, meant in the sanskrit writings mm. because shruti was de- deliberately made they do not want people to know it only unknown things would be given contributed and attributed with the divinity mm. if known it is known what is the content of vedas if the people were able to read and learn about veda they will not accept the sacred la- literature mm. they will know it is the work of the priesthood mm. so they do not want the people to know the real in content of the literature mm. that is why they keep it for themselves they refused it to others so they right. sanskrit but here this uh, the author sanskrit is the mother so many puranas and so many stories were floated with the brahmins mm. they claimed even tamil was created by a person from the north agastya mm. agastya mm. who gave the first uh, one grammar to tamil mm. the non existent grammar <laughs> agastya is mentioned only in the 8th century literature that was no eight, eight century ad 8th century ad ad oh, okay that's pretty pretty so, new yeah, mm. through your story they floated this mm. and he went to pudil hills mm. the tirunelveli region pudil hills for a divine purpose mm. lord shiva's wedding was taking place very costly wedding so, uh, like uh, the our bjp leaders wedding uh, uh, events mm. very costly so many people assembled there so kailash began to uh, it has submerged mm. so to retain the balance Uh, agastya was sent to the pudil hills so when he reached there the balance was restored mm. the people who wrote the puranas did not know that the world is spherical mm. and they stated that this agastya now evolved the grammar first grammar of tamil mm. and whose uh, I mean, disciple was tulka peer whose uh, grammar work is now available mm. but tulka peer's work never mentions agastya Mm. there not even a single reference to agastya so they made false claims similarly when you go to kerala they will find that it was parashurama who created kerala mm. so everywhere they try i mean they try to establish their authority over other people mm. but called well prior to that elis mm. the madras uh, the uh, official elis mm. who first for the first time understood that the south indian languages come under a single linguistic family mm. how he came to know it because there was a school of linguistic studies in st george fort mm. to make the company officials know the languages of the local people at the time madras presidency had four linguistic regions mm. tamil telugu kannada malayalam yes so they had to go through the four uh, uh, linguistic region then they found that there were similarities in between the four languages mm. the first person to establish that the south indian languages belong to non sanskrit group was elis mm. 
and this was developed into a research thesis by Caldwell. Hmm. So if you claim that San, the Tamil had its own origin or Telugu had its own origin, then you are a traitor and you believed the Westerners. Hmm. The Westerners uh, I mean, m- uh, did not destroy it. They revealed the fact through linguistic study, philological studies hmm. that these languages come under a similar thing. They could thrive without, sans- without Sanskrit. Right. And the basic words were entirely different from the mm. Sanskrit group of languages. Mm. So that was established. When they were able to establish it, they now say that it was out of their conspiracy, divide and rule. Right. And Marshall, when he discovered the excavations, conducted excavations, found that pre-Aryan urban civilization were existing in those regions, he became a conspirator. It right. was a conspiracy. Right. So whatever was challenging the monopolistic claims of the Brahmins, hmm. those things will be treated as conspiracies. Traitors and conspiracies, yeah. If we believe that we are a traitor, hmm. Hmm. if we accept that view, we become a traitor. Hmm. But if any foreigner says that the Brahmins were the makers of the entire civilization, like David Frawley, who is in America, hmm. then they become the real scholar. Hmm. My, uh, Michel Danino of France, who was a, uh, I mean, uh, uh, who was a pattern of Sanskrit knowledge, and he is a great scholar. Mm. If you agree with the Sanskrit superiority, mm. you are a patriot. Mm. If you don't agree with the Sanskrit superiority, Brahminical superiority, you become a traitor. Right. This is the attitude. India as a multiple I mean, cultures country, mm. where we people, there is a need to live together, we mm. understand. Mm. We will live together, but on the base of equality, on the base of equal uh, dignity. All these Hindutva claims make, I mean, question our dignity in a, uh, what do you call, uh, a society, united society. India can be strong only when this diversity is respected mm. and harmony is established. Mm. India will weaken it will be split into groups if this uniformity is insisted a condition for unity. Mm. The Hindutva forces want us to accept uniformity as a precondition for unity. Mm. Real and knowledgeable people, real patriot, patriotism means love of the people, not merely land, love mm. of the people too. Mm. The real patriots. Real patriots would not accept anything that would deprive the people of their dignity. Right. So that is the challenge. Right. So one last question, and, and I'm, I know we ran out of the time, but one last question, sir. Uh, from uh, um, the uh, Shankaracharya, the Adi Shankaracharya, who, who is from Kerala, uh, uh, he calls himself as, as the Dravida Putra, though he is venerated as an Arya, and, uh, you know, he, he is a Brahmin and he is uh, the guru of Matas, etc., etc., but he calls himself as the Dravida Putra. So, does it indicate in their opinion that Dravida is simply uh, means the south or the, simply means a, a region, not a separate race? Dravida has a different dimensions. The non-Aryan culture, mm. civilization that existed in India, and beyond India, they could be um, in brought under the category Dravidian civilization. Mm. Dravida is something like Aryan. And the Sanskrit is a language, Tamil is a language. Mm. So here Dravida, we did not invent the word Dravida for a mischievous hidden agenda purpose. Okay. Dravida was used for the first time in inscription we find in Karavela's Adigumba inscription. Okay. Where it refers to Dramila Sangadam, mm. a Dravidian confederacy, mm. which was there for 113 years. And that confederacy was broken by Karavela of Kalinga. Mm. So that inscription belongs to 169 BC. So as early as 2nd century BC, Dravida was known to them, known to mm. the people. Mm. And here in the Skanda Purana, again in Sanskrit, there are reference to Panja Dravida, mm. the Brahmins who were living in five Dravidian territories. Mm. So all the non-Aryans were known as Dravidas, Panja Dravidas. Okay. So that included Marathi region, mm. that included Gujarati region, mm. Andhra region, mm. Tamil region too. Mm. 
So, Dravida was a known term to identify non-Aryan, non-Brahmin. So, anything people. outside of that Aryavarta is Dravida? Aryavarta. Hmm. Aryavarta never included South India. Right. The European uh, uh, the, uh, visitors to hmm. India in the first century AD, hmm. uh, even before that, hmm. the Pliny, Libby and other people, right. even that book, Periplus, they refer to the South Indian region as Dhamarike, not as Indike. Mm. Dhamarike. Right. So, they had a different identity. Mm. So, this Shankara, Shankaracharya is a very important character in Indian cultural socialist. Right. He belonged to 8th century AD. Mm. He did not call himself Dravada Shishu. That is how the Brahmins today claim. He referred to Tirinyana Sambandar, one of the Saivet Nayan Mar, hmm. as Dravada Shishu, Dravada Child. That means he was a non-Aryan, non-Brahmin, Dravada Shishu. So then, Dravidian group of languages, this was, uh, I mean, in, uh, I mean, this was, uh, form, this theory was formulated only in the 19th century. Hmm. So, Dravida means several, a different culture and a different linguistic group and different faith system. But in any way, hmm. it means non-Aryan, non-Brahmin. Non-Aryan, non-Brahmin. We are so basically, uh, the discussion that we had today simply proves that uh, the IIT Kharagpur and the agenda behind the calendar that they have produced uh, to showcase as if there is uh, the, the Aryan uh, settlement or invasion or two separate lingu linguistic and cultural groups that exist in India, one as Dravida and one uh, and the other as, as Arya is a myth is what they are saying. But uh, Because uh, it is inconvenient to them. Right, because it is inconvenient to them as you obviously and rightly uh, put forth. Thank you very much, uh, sir, uh, Professor Karunanandan Garu. Thank you very much for giving us some time and, and uh, explaining in detail. It is, uh, I, I know it takes, uh, you know, a lot of uh, information that you have and you have to condense it within the time that we have but still communicate the punch inside that uh, information to all the audiences. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure and honor working with you sir for this one hour and uh, uh, we hopefully have uh, a few more sessions if uh, you know if your time permits so that our audience can get benefit out of it. Thank you. Thank you. It is a pleasure to share my views with people like you and your audience. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. thank you very much, sir. And that is uh, our eye opener for today. And we will meet uh, uh, you with yet another episode. Uh, as you can see that um, uh, the Hindutva ideology is being pushed in the form of education, in the form of calendar, in the form of TV serials, in the form of uh, uh, short movies, in the form of big screen movies, what not, all mediums are used to, to propagate this knowledge, this agenda. Our only purpose is that we are right. against exploitation, right. domination. Right. If anything is projected any, uh, by any means to justify and sustain and promote exploitation, mm. we will have to counter it with facts. Right. Thank you. And thank you very much, sir. As being a true citizen of India, it is our duty to counter and, uh, and give r actual facts to people what is true and what is not. So, thank you very much for watching this show. We will meet you once again next week. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. It is uh, a pleasure.